I um I put a put our stream on uh, like I shared it on ISO Creations. I shared it on um, NZCC, which is New Zealand Comic Creators, and also uh, I think it was Retcon, which is a um, Auckland uh, retro uh, pop culture convention that they have there. They, they they really concentrate on like old older stuff, like 80s, 60s, 70s stuff. So like you'll find old DVDs, old toys, Transformers, like GI Joe stuff. So it's been it's really interesting um, to be part of that. Last year we went up there and um, you know hung out with them because some of my friends are part of that group and made good friends with Darren. Um, I can't remember his last name, but he, in the middle of it, um, it's got Darren. Ray. So hi everybody that's joined us. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, I have the amazing privilege of joining Inuera, um, Inurewa Teho, who's our local direct, um, creative director at Creative Northland here. And it's uh, and we've worked in partnership for the last year or so. It's been for um, helping out with running the convention with Plunge. And it's been a real privilege and just really excited that she's been able to make time for us to, I um, mean, for me personally, to be able to come on and talk about what we're going to see happening, I guess, I haven't told her what I was going to ask questions about, so just kind of fresh about where we at in Whangarei, because you know, uh, with all everything that's going on, I've watched a lot of um, things get postponed as, as well as ourselves. And how do we end up going forward, coming out of this? Especially, especially this week, we're going to go into level three, and there's still the restrictions. And you know, what is there for us uh, the rest of the year? Um, Henry, can you please introduce yourself, so for the folks that aren't aware. Oh, kia ora, Arun. Thank you. Um, on this uh, um, autumn day uh, in uh, April, uh, a bit cool. So um, I'm Hanuri Wataho. I'm affectionately known as Hanu, uh, and I'm the general manager for Creative Northland. I uh, have been here in that role now for four and a half years for my sins, and beautiful sins they have been, uh, and, you know, with our creative community. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. It's an uh, interesting time for the creative sector in New Zealand, but for Northland, you know, like many of other regions, uh, we've got some challenges coming up. But right now, in crisis mode, it's really um, uh, what's lots of hope and inspiration that's coming through from the creative sector to continue to create, even though you know we've there's work that we cannot do, we're still creating, and I think that's really important. Yay, so important. Yeah, it's been amazing watching everybody just share their work, especially on ISO Creations, their website that um, you guys set up on Facebook, uh, the group page there, just watching what everybody's doing. It's just, uh, you know, from like uh, painting to sewing, you know, and sculptures. It's very uh, interesting to, you know, when you think that creative people, I know myself, I was finding it really hard at the start. Uh, with all the stresses because um, as a creative person you don't want stress because you 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 know you feel clamped and you don't want to you can't create yet when you see all these other people doing it and you get inspired to do that um, so it was really good to see that oh thanks Ada. yeah look you know as you know you know most of my, all of our team and we've all gone to working remotely but even though we've gone to remotely and, and some of us are, um, you know because we're such a face-to-face -face industry means the team have gone right so rather than trying to be reactive we're trying to be really proactive in what we're mm -hmm. doing also too i mean it's we're finding the time to think and i'm really liking that in this remoteness though there are challenges that in this from isolation phase mm -hmm. is that the team has been able to think and co-create yeah. and think well how can we support the community so we've really rethought our whole e-weekly newsletter that goes on the sort of the content that, that yeah. we've got there. We've created ISO creation as a way for us to keep connected with our creative community in Northland. And you're so right, Aru, the things that are coming through there are amazing, mm -hmm. you know, and people, what people do from Intercept with Jenny, uh, with, with Jenny, with Jenny Hill, to uh, what you're seeing with Paul Olson, who was part of the Fun mm -hmm. Sculpt Symposium, people like Dave Snowden, who has sculpted all the way up in Kaitaia, you know, these um, photographers, uh, Kim Marsden, he's just Amazing works. This is what people are doing at home. Mm. And then we've got our makerspace with Jolene. And Jolene uh, is our, was our North Tech a Year 3 graduate this year. So she's been with us and she's um, working with North Tech and she does about you know a few hours with us. So 
you can go onto Instagram and do the maker space with her. She's showing you all these different mm. things. You can make a home with kids, which is good. Um, and then we've got our Quiet Earth campaign, which is just about gratitude. You know, because yeah. of us, we took the time. There's things for us to remember. There's time for us to just be grateful for whom we are. And yeah. some of the conversations we're having is that, you know, I know that you're by yourself, but at the same time, families are probably having the best quality time they've ever had. Mm-hmm. So, and so though there are lots of downs, there's a lot yeah. of pluses. Hey, and within those pluses, it's just watching the level of, um, and I'll use this word, innovation that's going on at home yeah. to keep us um, alive, uh, active, engaged, you know, because our mental well-being is so important. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so, you know, I, I find that very encouraging. Yeah, innovation is really interesting because, like, uh, I mean, I've had to teach myself this thing, this program. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've I've never you know I've, I've been jealous of everybody else on YouTube and even on here, and I've been watching this like what is the best thing to, you know, to use to do this, and I'm still fumbling my way through it. It's only been three days, and yet, you know, being able to talk to people, interview people in this way, and learning new skills yeah. in this time, yeah, in this time that's like it's stuck going. What else can I learn how to do? And because, like, you're right, you know, you get uh, sidetracked by what you can learn because you're too busy. And now you get your time to spend with family and um, children and folks. And But also you get to do this and be able to reach out to people in a different way across the world and even, you know, locally. It's just been really interesting. And, um, you know, in some of the work that I've seen on ISO creations, I don't even know those people, some of those people, and like seeing what they've been able to do, it's been really good. Oh, yeah, it's it's really good to see. I mean, it's it's very, yeah, it's really uplifting, I think, you mm. know, because when you're in isolation, the things that I'm finding is, is that though we might be re- reading the news and scanning the news and hearing mm. things, is that it's not the same as actually being out in your community every day, you know, so... Yeah. Uh, you, you know, we don't know what level of um, uh, stress may be happening in our, in mm-hmm. our uh, uh, what do you call them, old people's homes. You know, we don't know yeah. what's happening there. We don't know really the stress that may be happening amongst our hospital staff. You can only yeah. take this upon what's coming through on our social media channels. So technology right now is becoming the, has really come to the forefront, eh? And you're yeah. seeing families, you know, I mean, I was watching, well, you know, I'm a bit of a troll on social media because I, I like to know what's happening. But, yeah. you know, it was really, there was one um, uh, video there done by a father and a daughter, you know, to a particular song they obviously they love and dancing. And it really mm-hmm. made me happy because I was thinking, how often would a ma- father and a daughter get to do that? You know, yeah. you're in different circumstances. Uh, quizzes, you know, families are creating quizzes and you're seeing people, I mean, I, you know, um, I think I saw something else the other day where... Um, a father and a son had a drawing competition and the dad said, this is the first time I've drawn anything since I was at high school. What an yeah. amazing artist he was. So, you know, there's that mm. level of connectivity within the family. Um, you know, and yeah, so that's just one of many stories. And then, of course, you, you see getting your, as you said, skills. So we're building yeah. skills in and around technology and the use of technology that perhaps if we were in a normal situation, we wouldn't get time to do. You know, mm. and we're looking for online tools that can support us as creative businesses, eh? So, you yes. know, facilitated meetings, you know, these things like um, online whiteboard that you can use called, you know, com, for example. So you can do a facilitated meeting online. You know, um, you know you've got Zoom. Everybody's into using Zoom and there's Gepibot and, and so many other different apps that can mm. help our um uh, our workflow currently, you know, we're working remotely. So, you know, Zoom's become the way of doing meetings. And even just for Creative Northland, just you know, recently last week, we had our first live online conversation. But I'm yeah. so grateful to having PANS and Open Live provide the, you know, the technical support for us to be able to do that and partner with us, you know, so we could hear from four of our leaders within the community, you know, yeah. what is. What does um, post-COVID look like? You know, what are you, what are you going to be yeah. doing to reboot arts for, for you guys within your areas? Because, you know, though I'm trying to keep it really positive and upbeat, we've got some big challenges coming ahead, you know, for our mm-hmm. venues, touring of shows and productions. It's not going to be as business as usual. So what are we going to do differently, you know? Uh, and some of our business, uh, um, creative businesses are really struggling just now. So people like, you know, 
as you know, Julia Tapp, uh, if I may yeah. use her name, you know, I just, I'm, I'm absolutely always blown away by yeah. what the Morton Arts Centre create, you know, yeah. knowing that of them as a creative business, they're going through their own challenges, you know. So yeah. the economic recovery packets the government's put out, for example, you know, wage subsidy, I cannot say enough. If you feel that you don't, you don't qualify, please ring up, talk to somebody about it, because you may yes. do. Don't assume you, you don't. Um, with Creative New Zealand's economic recovery package, 16 uh, million there, and the resilient grant, resilience grants, there's two out, is that, yeah. look, you know, that is a relief package that's un, I've never seen happen before for our creative sector. Um, yeah. Not all of us are going to apply to it, but we've got Creative Northland ourselves, we've got a whole series of funding clinics that we're going to do next week, just to yeah. be able to talk to people through about what the ideas and concepts may be, uh, mm. because it's post-COVID, you know, it's about new, it's about research, it's about potential yeah. new works. It may not be about delivery, but certainly looking into what could we create, you know, together. Because mm. next six months is going to be, the landscape is going to change, you know. Yeah. It's going to be like we know. And uh, we've just had some, uh, we did a uh, COVID-19 impact survey and we've got the results out, you know. So we know that since the 27th of March, we ran that survey for two weeks. Uh, by mm. the 6th of April, we know that 300 is what we know, and there'll probably be a lot more, 361 yep. events cancelled, you know? That's events, activities, yeah. workshops and programs, which has, uh, and we did some estimates, and that value dollar to the Northland economy is yep. up to around about 4 million, you know, lost in one week. Crazy, eh? Yep. You know? Yeah, well, um, that, was a, that was what my, um, like, we're basically not going to, um, I mean, there's, there's a question, huge question mark on plunge. Like, um, are we going to be able to put it on because they're talking about great, you can't have gatherings and until when can't we have gatherings? It's like, how far can we push it and not have this on? As well as, like, I mean, you've got all these other shows as well going forward. Uh, you've got youth, um, youth theatre, uh, you know, you've got Forum North, um, you've got the museum events and stuff like that, um, as well as, like, um, shows over at North Tech. How, yeah, the, my question was, how are we going to, yeah, how do we get the next six months and how do we get through it? Because I know next year is going to be fine because we can restructure, but these all these events in this next six months, um, what do you, how do you think we're going to, yeah, get through it if we can? It's going to take a lot more communication and collaboration and looking at what the new partnerships may be. It's looking at who are our relationships out there in the Whangarei community, you know, yep. what do we do with business. Um, venues and facilities, yep, they're going to be affected because as we go into, if we go into level three, level two, there's still mm. level two, we have a, you know, gatherings will be small. But yep. then it's, I suppose it comes down to the use of technology and that enables us to actually still have small gatherings but yep. still share what's happening remotely, you know? Yep. So I, I don't have all the answers. I really don't. Yeah, I, yeah. What I do know is that, you know, we've got conversations happening within our community to look at how do we do these things, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, the things that we need to understand is where do uh, local government currently sit on our facilities, you know? Yeah. Uh, when you look at Whangarei here, you've got Forum North. What can Forum North be used for and in what stage and what are they planning yeah. for? Um, you look at toll, this toll, no, sorry, I mustn't say that, Seminoff Stadium, you know, what are they planning for and what yeah. does it look like from them down there? And then it's about our relationships with North Chamber, I think, with North London to determine what their economic recovery plans look like for, for the region, but also for Whangarei specifically. But with, with Whangarei, we haven't had anything come out from local government yet, you know, about what, what, what it may look like. And we probably won't for another month or so, I think. So I know Sean Mai has a vision, you know, and was really grateful to be able to read that uh, on the uh, Whangarei District Council uh, website about where she thinks things are going for economic recovery. But for arts and culture in Whangarei, we've taken a huge hit. And we like tourism, yeah. similar, eh? is that yeah. we're very tactile, very face-to-face -face industry, um, and uh, it's about where, what are the new business models, new revenue streams look like, and I think, what are our solutions for ourselves? Mm -hmm. eh? And so it's about 
um, uh, our key arts organisations having more conversations and mm. cross collaborating with each other to say, well, look, why don't we try this? You know, or why do we try that? Yeah. It won't be business as usual. It can't be. <laughs> yeah. You know? it's, it's, really, it's really interesting. Um, trying to like i mean trying to work out how to get through it is uh it's one of those like it's like up in a you know pushing you know pushing a lorry up the hill and it's like we haven't faced this before which is you know our generation hasn't faced it um this sort of uh, economic sort of situation um what are uh, like carry on i was just gonna say i think in this particular time it's about when we go level three or level two, is that we need to plan. And at the moment, yeah. time is on our side, side to plan. Mm -hmm. We don't, I think from my perspective, is that we're always being very reactive in our businesses, even for yeah. us, Credit Northland, because you know, you always got people coming in talking to you about the ideas. It's that, that right now, what's different is that working remotely gives you the time to sit down and think, what is it yeah. I want to achieve? Where do I actually want to go, you know? Yeah. And one of the things that creative people are very, very good at is that if we take a design-led thinking approach, we get into yeah. the co-creation, the ideation, we know we, we look at our solutions, you know, and then we mm. test it. Because yeah. we don't come from, we come, our models are different, they're around the other way. We don't always need the money to create stuff, eh? Exactly. So, you know, yeah, you know, so it's about what, what we want to do. If you if you have a black pink piece of paper and you were to write down everything you wanted is that mm. you can then start the power elimination to think well where do, do I want to be in the next six months where do I yeah. want to be in the next 12 months and I, I for me uh, if I was that's my biggest advice to everybody is that if, as far as an artist an arts group an arts, uh, arts organization you've got time to plan yeah? yeah you've got time to look at how technology can work for you What's the online mentoring you may want to be doing? What's the training you may want to be doing? You know, has there been an auto? Has there been a digital automation project that you've been wanting to do with your website for quite mm, some mm. time? You know, what's the marketing or branding you want to put out there? Now, not every artist will get to that level, but this is where uh, looking who is in your network of people yeah. that could help you. Yeah. Because you mustn't, even though we might be in isolation working remotely, actually, I have to say thank you so much for reaching out to have this conversation. Yeah? Mm, thank you. Because otherwise... I mean, thank you for coming on. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like, why haven't I done this already? Why haven't I, you know, yeah. talked to you already about this? Because I know a lot of people would be wanting to know what what is going on locally because you you have probably the biggest thumb on things, you know, around uh, when it comes to the cre um, creative community in Whangarei. So I was like, I should have, you know, so I'm, I mean, I was planning for tomorrow, but I'm so glad you had the time to come on today. So, yeah. Oh, thanks, Adam. Well, that's the thing, is that, so, if you think about, if we were in a pre-COVID, is that how much time would you and I get to talk to each other? <laughs> how much time, you know? Yeah. You may come yeah. into the office and say, hi, I know you've got time, sorry, I haven't, but because we've always got meetings, we're having to drive to yeah. meetings. Whereas I don't know about you, but I'm actually finding working remotely actually more productive. I'm finding that the level of conversation I have is more uh, uh, instant and we get decisions a lot faster. Though there yeah. may be language that gets lost sometimes in these conversations, yeah. actually the thinking process is moving faster. And so yeah. and I'm having more conversations with people that I wouldn't normally get to have a conversation with. with. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a real positive. So one of the things for us as a team with Creative Northland is saying, if this is the level of engagement we're having now, how do we make sure when we get into level two and back to whatever the new norm looks like, how do we continue yeah. this? Can we continue this? Why would we want to stop doing this? Because exactly. technology has shown us how we can bring a new audience into us. You know? yeah. And the level of interacting may be not as tactile, but we still have a level of engagement that mm. enables us to uh, get outcomes, you know, whatever that may be. Well, you're mentioning that, like, you you were able to talk with about 15 different people on one website before that you weren't able, you know, that sort of gathering. And this is the thing about technology, I mean, that we're able to connect in a different way, but at least still face-to-face, -face, even though we're not right next to each other. And learning new 
uh, like new digital platforms. And I know creative uh, technology, Northland, you know, they've all they've been pushing this bar for a couple of years now. And I think, um, you know, they're sort of the they're sort of like um, the leaders in this what we're doing. But we're just, I mean, myself just learning these things. Like, I mean, I had the time to actually learn how to run a website in this the last couple of weeks. You know, how to do all this stuff, which I didn't have the time for before. And you're right. We were so busy before with other stuff, and now that we're stuck and not being able to do that, we're able to think outside of what else can we do to get more busy. Because otherwise, if we're left to our thinking, you could get negative. And I found myself doing that way as well. Where as a creative person, you kind of go, "Ah, oh, okay, I can't do this. I can't do that. I kind of that." And now I feel down about it. Then go, "Well, what can I do?" And that's, that's the that's thing the that we can do. Word. Yeah, exactly. What can we do? And mm. Uh, some will say, look at it from their cup half empty and you go mm. actually, keep the cup full because actually there's a lot you can do you know, mm. once again you can plan you can think, you can determine who do I want to partner, who do I want to reach out to, even yep. from the from the revenue perspective is that because we're such a, an ideas industry, you yep. know, we are ideas industry is that looking at the idea as to what revenue can be generated off it. You know, mm. it's things like if you've got a website, then you, you know, how many of you looked at the button that says, if you'd like what I'm doing, donate. You know, yeah. because it might be a revenue stream that you've never thought about before. Mm. Or how mm. often do we get time to look at what the crowdfunding campaign that may be right now that you yeah. can launch, say, from the 1st of June, that could actually, you know, support your online mentoring, for example, or yep. support your um, the development of a new script, or in your case, you know, it's you know the next new comic book that's coming out that you want to yep. present online digitally. You know, so it gives you yep. time to think what are the ways the new revenue streams can be. So funding, yep. funding is not going to be the same as we know it. Yeah, yep. but New Zealand's out there, and I think every creative practitioner should apply. Who lives yeah. in Morpeth and family should give it a go, you know? That, yeah, that's, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing go. stopping us. Nothing, sorry, but nothing to lose. It's mm. about now, I think the key word is communication. You know, yeah. don't feel isolated. If you can, send an email, use your phone, mm. get connected through Zoom, ask the questions. Yeah. You know, and, and that will help you determine where whether you can apply to that funding or not, yeah? Mm -hmm. The other thing I was really encouraged by is that Arts Foundation, um, they've just launched their, through Boosted, they've just launched their new future fund. And uh, okay. so they're doing a matching dollar thing, you know, which is great. So uh, mm -hmm. they're looking to support, I think, uh, 300 projects, uh, and they'll donate $1,000 or match, a thousand, you know, if you raise $1,000, they will match 1000 I go, wow, mm -hmm. that's, that's fantastic, you know? So I'm going to explore that possibility for, uh, for for Northland because if we could do something similar through Boosted, that'd be great for our yeah. creative practitioners, eh? So well, I, I saw the link that you put out, and I just I, I sent them an email. I said, "Yeah, well, this is what we're doing. So why not try it? Anything's possible right now. And if you don't try it, you never know." And That's so yeah, true. yeah, absolutely. I don't try it. You there? We've got in this. As I, as I put it, it's um, it's an open canvas. We're yeah. all working through through it, aren't we? You know, every industry is. Every industry is hard hit for your education, yeah. hospitality, for the arts and cultural sector and the heritage sector is that we're all bound by hospitality, auxiliary yeah. services. Even events uh, are going to be different, but can we actually yeah. see what those difference those differences may be in the way that we present an event? The first of our events that come alive again won't be not till next year, you know, could yeah. be for us. And I'm going, you know, so uh, it will be even those big, large events when we, when we still start them together, there's mm. that's 12 months in planning. And some people will be yeah. planning for those events next year. Hey, But um, meanwhile is that the doors are open, virtual reality, uh, augmented yeah. reality, uh, creative technology north, Linda Deer, uh, you know, with Maggie and, the, and all her yep. large co you know, cohort. You know, you've got people like Tony Gross um, with Exports Gaming, for example, doing amazing things too. So yes. you know, we need to help each other as much as we can. So, mm. yeah, 
reach out. I think that's all we can do in this particular level of time. And I think that's something that Whangarei people are really good. I think it's something that Northland's really good at, is mm. that if we look at all our creative platforms, you know, across Northland, uh, you know, <clears throat> looking at local, um, uh, you know, oh gosh, there's so many of them, you know, like Love It Here Whangarei, um, everyone's active on them in some particular way. Well, you've got the quarry as well. So, I mean, you know, if sculpture garden, all that stuff. I mean, there's so much creativity, you know. You're right. It's it's going to be a different um, different kind of outlook on things. But um, I'm, sh I'm sure as Northlanders, the pioneers that we are, you know, it's not going to be too hard to manage us through this. I think so. I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's. No, they didn't come out. I think so. I think you're right on that, Aru. Yeah, yeah. totally. I mean, you, you think about your sector and your industry and where you sit, you mm. know what you want to achieve right now. So yes. we have to think of the things that stop us from doing that. Hey, and yeah. what are they really in this particular time? I mean, it has really given us uh, four weeks of just sitting down and thinking yeah. and learning. What a, yeah, and we don't get to yeah. do that. No, we no. don't get that time to to think, because we we're as as a community, we're always on the go, you know. Mm -hmm. So, if you think about it, <clears throat> is that when in times of adversity, creativity comes to the fore. So that's true. If one of the conversations I that I'm thinking about with my colleagues uh, regionally and mm. nationally is the levels of advocacy that is required for the creative industries, creative sector. Because yeah. in this time, we should be seen as an essential service. We should exactly. be pushed to the forefront because of what happens yeah. in our communities. Everybody want you know, what we turn to at the end of the day. Yeah. So we, what's the levels of efficacy for the arts and culture sector, you know, um, at these particular times? And where do we sit in those essential services roles mm. when it comes to social well-being, especially, you know, with our, with our uh, elderly and our aged concerned and with our youth, where do we sit, you know, uh, mm. how do we help and how do we support? The ways we end up helping and support is because we know that we can put our ways in there or because we have connections in there at the end of the day. Yeah. But in this time, I go, well, yeah, we're going to be hit big, big time. We're going to go yeah. to New Zealand. We're really going to be hit. Mm. But there, there is, at a top-down level, don't forget about us. You know, we could yeah. be your solution. Yeah, not your problem. We're the solution. Yeah, I mean, we're, I mean, artists are real thinkers. I think that's where it come, really comes down to, we're problem solvers and thinkers because um, it's, I don't know what it is about creative people is that they really, really think a lot. And, uh, and I find myself trying to think through, well, you know, like trying to learn something, trying to push, push the envelope as we always do, you know, trying to bring something more to the community because we're always trying to say what is what's more better for our community in arts you know even though sometimes people don't think arts is an important thing it is one of the major important things because it helps with the mental health of our community yeah yeah and you and you have anybody you know you know that because mm. you've championed it you know so for a long time within your own sector and as an mm. individual you know you know what mm. your own mental um well-being has meant for you and your art mm. form, hey, and how it yeah. helped, has helped too. So we've got some amazing, we've got fantastic samples right through the country. Um, mm. And within Northland and within Whangarei is that we know the agencies that are there that we can support. Yes. But, but in a time, so one of the things I th I suppose conversations that I'm enjoying having is around the ecology of, of our mm. sector. What does the ecology of the arts and, uh, art sector look like to us? Can you see it? Can you feel it? Do you think it? Do you know it? Mm. Then it's looking at the ecology around from arts plus community, arts plus investment, arts plus, you know, social needs. You know, there's a whole areas of cross-pollinisation that mm. can occur with other sectors, uh, you know. So what our, as fundings change, is that then what is the role that we play with our business community, with our yeah. um, and other non-for-profits, NGO communities that normally we wouldn't get to to spend time mm -hmm. with. And I think, you know, these conversations to more to be had in those particular areas. Yeah. Um, and certainly, so the other thing too is that, you know, the creative sector is we're disruptors, aren't we? You know, as an individual, we're disruptors. So yes. the disruptor 
is that then, you know, the messages that we communicate out there is that what are they and are we seeing them <laughs> currently, yeah. you know? Uh, and it's because activism is part of who we are and we've yeah. seen, you know, for centuries now, you know, that's the way the through war, through bad times, you know, our key communication messages of who we are, you know, the, the philosophy of how we are, the intrinsic value of how we, who, who we are comes, mm -hmm. you see it in everything that is creative and you can see it yeah. at the moment, you know, you know the, the persons who the creator, his personal, his personal um, beliefs become part of his art form that then mm -hmm. he can share and, and with, with the community. And that's what keeps us alive. That's what keeps the passion going, the enthusiasm going. Because without that, we have nothing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a struggle. It's through struggle that we innovate, isn't it? That we actually, uh, you know, crunch the numbers. And um, I mean, I was talking um, earlier about having boundaries. Like you having only, if you only have a small amount of funding or, you know, or cash, you very quickly learn that how to restrict yourself to be able to use that and i think this is where we are right now it's like learning that okay so this is how much we have how do we get the best out of that and this is what's going to be for us for the next six months it's like okay fine we don't have so much but how do we do things differently to actually get that more out of that and you've already said it that we communicate more and that we you know, reach out to other people in the community, join up with them, because sure, funding isn't there for in large amounts, but at least if we connect with each other and you know work together, that then that small amount is going to go a long way. Yeah, totally. I mean, so yeah, I, I do believe that because I'm very. I believe in microfinancing. I believe in every dollar that we have enables us to do something. So. What can your dollar and my dollar do together? You know, mm. uh, as you know, I'm a, someone who loves the arts and uh, and does invest in the arts if I can. So, mm. you know, so right now I'm going. So, what does it look like for us? You know, what what does the the investments look like? And we have to look at our audiences around us who normally would be engaged either through performance, through mm. visual arts, um, you know, be it through. Uh, yeah, more visual and performing arts anyway, is that mm. there is funds there that um, that our communities have lost. How do we recapture that dollar value and can yeah. we? And yes, we can, but it not but we, that's where the, 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 the opportunity and the innovation comes is to think about how to recapture that dollar, you know? Mm. And it may not come from our normal audiences. That's what we have to look into, yeah, and be prepared mm. to sort of step outside our square at the moment. So at this time, though, it is challenging and economy-wise, we know we have a government who wants to get us back as soon as we can to generating our economy. Is yeah. that if I listen to where the hospitality sector is sitting at the moment, there's been restaurants, major restaurants who've been sitting for quite some time thinking, what are they going to do differently? So we're seeing now yeah. restaurants saying, we're online, we can deliver you food if they go to level three, you know? Yeah. Great, yeah. that's wonderful. Uh, so what can our sector do, you know, and I was really so encouraged to see someone like, um, to see uh, MD Galleries, Megan Dickinson, because, you know, they're very tactile, taking yeah. an online approach to, you know, artist talks okay. before breakfast, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's good because mm -hmm. in six months time, whenever we get back to what the new norm looks like, is that mm -hmm. there are artists out there who will be hitting the road running because of that, yeah. that experience. And that opportunity to talk to someone as mm. experienced as Megan Dickinson, for example. You know what I mean? Mm. So I go, the earth at the moment, uh, people on earth at the moment have been giving the opportunity. Here in New Zealand, I think we're very lucky because of our level of isolation from the rest of the world, is that yeah. time is on our side at the moment to have these conversations. So don't look too harshly on what the government is doing. Yeah. Don't look at it. Look at it as an opportunity and a time to rethink about Where's your future going? You know, mm. where, do, where do you want to be in six months? Do you want to be in the same job or do you want to do something differently? Is this the time that you thought about having your own creative business? And if it is, then what do you want to look like in six months' time? Mm. If you're an existing creative business and you have it, you know, you wanted to do something differently, what is it you wanted to do? Is it about organization? Is it about more of a digital presence? Is it about approaching that organization that you've not ever been able to approach, but you now feel you can, you know? Yeah. So the words are reach out, 
There is mm. nothing wrong with reaching out in this particular time. Some industries may not be able to have that conversation with us. But if we're yeah. talking about future, then the future is here now, then, then that conversation is let's explore it. Let's see where we can go. Mm. There's, you know, unlimited possibilities. Hey. Mm. I mean, that's the thing with with the technology, isn't it? Like, I mean, if I think a lot of, I mean, this is time not to waste the time that we have. I think that's the best thing about this is that the times that we have, I mean, like I woke up at eight and I was already on a meeting. <laughs> and it was like, uh, and then it was, okay, I'll do live stream and I'll do this and I'll do that. But that's the time that we have, you know, it's like if you if we can manage our time now uh, and be very, I find like I'm more productive now than I was before. It's a real thing. <laughs> I agree. I feel you know, it's like, oh my God. Yeah, I, I've learned new tools. You know, I've learned this thing. I, I'm, um, I've, I've been learning, um, yeah, just really being able to every day sort of almost do a live stream, which I didn't have time for before. I don't know why, but there was time, but I just didn't do it. And the other thing is being able to reach out through live streaming all the different people on the groups that we have and then getting feedback from them, you know, and finding out that they're actually connecting as well, that they're enjoying it or, you know, they leave comments saying, well, you know, such and such. But it's it's a really powerful time to reinvent yourself as well, I think. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Aru, on that one, you know. Yeah. Reinvent, rethink, repurpose, you know, mm. redesign, uh, and if you, yeah, and and that's the beauty, isn't it? Because if you're yeah. with your fano, then your fano can share in the thinking. And yeah. If you're by yourself, then it gives you time to think. Well, actually, I haven't talked to that person for a while. I've been meaning to. Let's have that yeah. conversation now. Uh, and look, I get it. I mean, you know, it, my team knows, and I think the half of the, the creative sector knows. Um, you know, my time management is pretty shite, uh, and uh, you know, I, I have not even got into the office before ten unless there's meetings that I've had to mm. be there. But you know, I I'm pretty much awake at seven, and I'm you yeah. know seven thirty. You'll see me showered and walking down to the computer, and I'm at my desk at eight, and I feel. Yeah. I'm being more productive. I'm getting through stuff that I n normally wouldn't. Well, no, I'm getting through the stuff that I should be getting through, but also other other stuff as well. Yeah. Because you know, I'm not answering 352 emails in one. You know, that I've got to get through. Yeah. Instead, the, the, the all our emails have reduced. You know, so the yeah. level of emails that are coming into into me. Uh, you know, I might be getting 10 or 12 a day, and it's manageable. Working yeah. remotely, we've my team, I've got our team on to uh, Slack. Do you know Slack? No. Uh, www.slack.com. It's a, a remote tool uh, for working for teams working together. Uh, and my team, we're using this. It means that I can, we can, we've got all our projects up. It means we can have all our conversations in there. And I, I don't know, but I actually find it, find it so productive with the team because yeah. I actually know what they're up to. You know, whereas I'm thinking before, did I know what they're up yeah. to? I'd have to think, hmm, team meetings, you know. Mm -hmm. But this way, the team meeting is that you're, you're Zooming, you've got your Slack uh, app open, you're seeing all your projects, you're able to type in a project, you know, project um, comment straight away, and the team yeah. know exactly what you're doing. So there's a level of productivity that's increased for us. Mm -hmm. Now, at this time, probably just need to recognise that there is also in our sector, in our community, there are those who have been stood down for work, have no work. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and, and that's really tough. Whereas for my team, you know, hours may be reduced and, you know, one of them may not be able to work because they're very face-to-face. -face, but yeah. we're able to rethink what we can do, you know, mm. and it's not business as usual for us. It really yeah. isn't. Um, you know, it's, but what the business is, is the time to ideate. Yeah? yeah, and that's what we're using for this time is to ideate even projects for me. So, yeah, when we come out of this, I'm looking forward to level three. Uh, level mm. three does mean my team will still be working in isolation. Level two means we will go back to an office situation, but it reduced yeah. hours. And once yeah. we're back to level one, then we can go, you know, full steam ahead. And, you know, a number of businesses will be like that. So it's going to be a while. So this mm. will be the mo main mode of communication. 
and of action. And yeah. that's okay. I'm okay with that, you know. Uh, we just need to, even our sector, remember that those who uh, find communicating really challenging, you know, yeah. and so finding out who hasn't got good levels of communication and how do we keep connected with them. Haven't got that far as yet, um, but mm. we do know within our community there are uh, those who are going to visit people who don't have good connectivity, especially in our out, yeah. outer reach in areas, you know, of uh, far north especially, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. There is, uh, I was actually talking to someone the other day about drone technology. <laughs> mm. You know, uh, what can we do around drone technology in this particular time? You know, how can we, yeah. and as you know, drone technology has already been used for the delivery of medical supplies. So, yeah. you know, can it be, uh, should we be sending, you know, drones out, for example, to go from the furthest reaches of the far north and see what they're up to down there and, you know, get the film set? You know, so, yeah. yeah. All sorts of unusual conversations, fun conversations. But that's the thing. I mean, like you, you're right. I mean, this um, this is a time to think about all those different technologies that work and at play. And it's yeah, the innovation that we can come up with. I mean, it's going to change. But also, I mean, it allows us to um, to to understand technology a bit more as well. Some things that you know we might have been fearful of. You know, like this whole idea of this, you know, I was like, this is a bit different, but yet it allows us to communicate better and having people w watch our conversation that probably never would actually interact with us or probably uh, wouldn't, might not even want to or be afraid of or might not want to, uh, who's that person? I don't know that person. I, I don't, you know, or fearful of being going to meet Henu, who's the manager of Creative North, and yet being sitting here, actually seeing who you are and, you know, listening to you where your heart's at, because, you know, seeing that you really are really passionate about what's going on and concerned about what's going on. And I think a lot of time uh, being in office, people don't see that. And I think this, this is the magic of what's happening now for me, I reckon, and for mo many people as well. Yeah, and uh, the other thing, yeah. sorry, excuse me, and Julia Tepp, you know, just before we went into this, uh, like, I think it was a week before the lockdown. And I actually had a conversation with um, Jason. I said, hey, how are you guys dealing with this? And even at that point, because all the, the whole idea of all the, um, the shows, the shows were closing down and we're going to be closed down. And now we've got like maybe six months of not happening. So help being able to help them or being able to you know have people go and say hey the other thing i noticed julia being able to teach online you know that's yeah. that's something that's really interesting they're talking about technology taking over and maggie dixon uh, dickinson and stuff and yeah i think we with with creative technologies northland they are for people like that are you know they're not used to technology that's they are a great fashion to uh, to pull into or you know reach out to yeah they, they're really good examples and there's more examples mm. from from northland you know uh what intercept are doing with their closing uh shelly machu with, with what she's doing i mean there's so many examples yeah and this time though is that how do you monetize that uh, yeah. so currently those people those uh artists uh or creative practitioners, let's call them creative entrepreneurs, are yep. foremost in my mind because you know that this is about their future, eh? Yes. So now they, 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 I'm making an assumption is these businesses have to really think, and now how do I how do I continue generating a dollar? Uh, mm -hmm. Jessie Rose for example, is another good example. You know, she's got all her children programs, and yep. she's got her business you know, side, and you know, she's a wonderful creative entrepreneur, but mm -hmm. you still have outgoings in your business. So yes. Conversations end up being for all our creative businesses is saying to the uh, property developer who you pay the rent, what can you do for for me in this particular time? Yeah. Some come to the table, some don't. But meanwhile, they're still trying to create. And so I really take my hat off to these creative businesses who are still yeah. creating. So that comes back to if we're still creating in this particular time, but we're not earning, then how do we earn? How do we yeah. generate a dollar from, from being online? And that's mm. the conversation, isn't it? The next conversation. Yeah. 
the future conversation is that how do we get people to actually pay for our online programs, will they? Yeah. Will they be able to do that? And um, at the moment, I haven't got the answer and I wouldn't want to go down that pathway. But this is yeah. where the levels of explore, exploration need, may need to continue with um, uh, philanthropic, you know, mm. who are our patrons for our business, uh, mm. who's the community business that's out there who loves the arts, but has it, you know, but wants to continue investing, you know, and yeah. how do we broker those opportunities, you know, how do those broker those opportunities for the creative business mm. to do that, you know? Mm. Uh, and, uh, and there was I, there was another yeah. question I, I was actually had, but thank you for answering that about the philanthropy. Yeah, you know, and, and the other thing too is to so my biggest thing for me at the moment, and Creative North is the same boat, is, mm. and I've always had this in my I've mind, and I say this quite often to creative businesses, is that do not be afraid to create that, don't, if you've got a website, create that button on that, that says, if you like what I do, donate. Every dollar mm. that, run, right, you, that, that, you, that is invested enables me to continue with this program for future. Yeah. Because then you can, they would, you have, you know, they would have worked out who their key target audience be. May it be for youth, you know, may it be for age of concern, may it be for mental health, disability. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole number of different groups out there, eh, who will benefit from our product in one particular way. Mm -hmm. But to keep a, a product online, for example, and to actually support other services, then yeah. you need to have revenue. So what does it look like for you? Can you see it? Can you feel it? Feel it? Can you think it? Mm -hmm. Even the old-fashioned bartering. Do we go back to the bartering yeah. days? You know, uh, what what do you have that I can barter with, for example, uh, that enables you know me to be able to do what I do? You know, um, so you know, if you go for you, Ari, though for me, I go. You've got Punch Comics. You know, the indie festival coming up. You know, yeah. marketing promotion of that. You know, what's the opportunity to, to for us to barter on something you might want from me or from you? But yeah. we don't know what that looks like yet. But that's the opportunity, the conversation, you know. Yeah. If you look at the old bartering systems, you know, it could be the vegetables in my garden, and I know you've got a good garden, you know, mm. you could be supplying me with brisket. Got a diet at the moment. I'm having problems with my pumpkins. <laughs> they just get about this big and then they die out. But yeah, you're right. And, and um, it's. You give me two weeks of your vegetables because I don't have garden, and I'll give you two weeks of my time. You know, it's. Can it's, we do that? Yeah. Like, in a creative sense, we can. You know, yeah. if that's what we want, because you can still place a value on that that, that food, can't yes. you? Yeah. You really can. It's like, you know, yeah. So, you know, you're a fantastic drawer. Perhaps I need a new brand. Can I keep mm. you to draw my brand in, a, in, in form for us? And uh, yeah. in return, uh, you know, I'll do all your social media for you for the next three weeks or something. Yeah. Okay? So it's looking into those levels of, what aspects of my business do I need support at in this particular time? Yeah, especially when you don't have the funds to pay someone to do the work. And I think you're right about that bartering. And um, it reminded me of a story I wrote about a nuclear fallout when there's nothing when there's nothing available and all you've got is ten, canned goods and one person has canned goods and you have something else they want. And it's like, but money doesn't mean anything at all at this point. And... Um, but that's the thing about artists, you know, you can always uh, share your, uh, you know, swap your arts yeah. and yeah. for, you know, and sell on that art to somebody else that you might know that we after that. Yeah. And um, I think for us, like, especially in the comic, uh, in, um, comic book and pop culture uh, community, we're always swapping. We're always buying and things off each other because like, you know, we want to complete, like complete as that we are, especially in my industry is that we, you know, we reach out and, online to say hey have you got this have you got that and um but that's something that's another way of thinking about this isn't it? it yes it is it's about being able to paint a financial story mm. <laughs> as i put it you know what does your financial story look like mm. to keep you in business what are your needs what do you require currently and can you tell us yeah. you know and if you can paint that financial story and then show your target audience what your needs are, then enables us mm. then to know how we can invest into you uh, yeah. and what assistance you may require. Now, this is something that, let me mention, a sharing artworks. We know our arts community does that. You know, I'll yeah. give you that, and maybe do this, yeah. Uh, and you've just given a really good example for what sharing the comics around, and mm. that's a story that we don't talk about enough within our sector. Yeah. 
So if we go back to good old fashioned economics, bartering was the way of, of you know of a whole society in a particular time. Bartering still happens today, but it's about looking at it from a perspective. What what does the new bartering look like in the twenty yeah. first century? You know, once again, I always come back. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Do you think it? Do you not? And if you can, then put it together based upon those emotions, because we have nothing to lose. You know, yeah. to actually present it. But to do that, we need to tell our story. You know, yeah. uh, and being able to tell our financial story is to say, um, well, like this, I will give you an example of our venues currently. Is that mm. you know we've got, uh, especially one particular being venue, uh, Turner Centre up in Kirikiri, you know, who um, before shut down may not be able to open their doors again because mm. they've got a commercial, you know, um, uh, income expenditure uh, and touring of shows is not happening at the moment. But if we were to look at them and think about what is it they provide to our community, then it's about thinking what is it that we could provide to them and what can they provide back to us, you know, yeah. uh, to ensure the, 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 not the sustainability, the viability mm. of that ongoing concern in, yeah. in today's, um, uh, you know, in today's platform where we currently sit at the moment. You know? yeah. So there are ways and means we can do things. We just need to have more of the conversation. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, more of the conversation, I think. Hmm. Anyway, I hope that's helpful, Ardu. That is. Um, so in, in closing, what, um, any other suggestions or any other, you know, words? Uh, well, look, um, for your audience, I'd go, these are the final things for me, is that uh, I'll go this way. One, wage subsidy. The um, government have put out, you know, the economic recovery pay package. There's a mm. wage subsidy there for you. Uh, if you don't think and I'll go this, if you don't think you, you apply, um, that you uh, can apply for it, think again, reach mm. out, ring up people and talk to them, ring us and talk to us about it. Mm. Have the confidence to go for that wage subsidy because you just never know. If you've got a loss of income, then you, you, may, be able, you may be and potentially be able to get it. So one, don't discount the wage subsidy. Uh, two, um, Creative New Zealand has got their economic pack package out. They've got two resilient grants there. Uh, one's the resilience uh, arts continuity up to fifty thousand, and then loss of income, which is up to ten thousand. Mm -hmm. If you want to know more information about that, you can just drop us an email to Creative Northland, and I can actually talk you through that. And we've mm -hmm. got funding products starting from Tuesday next week, uh, running for three weeks on a Tuesday, Thursday at eleven a.m. Just to talk through 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 mm -hmm. that. Three, if you are a creative business, is that then think about who your audiences and who could you reach out to ask for help and support and when I say help and support it's actually about investment into your business for mm. the type of work that you do uh, you know and don't be afraid to ask for sponsorship at this particular time yeah uh, everyone's in the same boat and it may not be asking for huge amounts but sometimes you know, it's just about that you know every hundred dollars five hundred dollars a thousand dollars can actually mm. help you know so yeah um, and the other thing is, is that uh, talk to your community, stay engaged yeah. with your community. You know, don't feel that you're alone because mm. that's that's not going to help your own mental well-being. Yeah. Reach yeah. out, reach out to your community. Don't, don't you know? Even though we're in our bubbles at the moment, is that there are people out there to help you? You know. Yeah. So if you need more information, you can go to the Creative Northland uh, website. Uh, we've got just look for the COVID nineteen. Um, button and it'll give you a whole lot of information there uh, and yeah you know um, stay connected um, within the bubbles that you are and yeah and together we can together the next six months the new normal happen with all of us working together so the words are resilience um, collaboration uh, solutions communicate and no, those are the things I think are so important at the moment. Mm. Yeah. And being yeah. really innovative as well. Yeah. 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 Learning learning new skills right now and being innovative when we come out of this. Yeah, innovation. That's right. Mm. Yes. So yep. That's uh yeah, be safe, be kind. Be kind to yourself, I think. Mm. So I do, you know, we have to be kind to ourselves, don't be too hard on yourselves. At these yeah. times don't put too much pressure on yourself. 
you know, there is, it's just take each day as it comes, plan, you've got time to plan, think where your future mm. wants to be, look what the opportunities are out there for you currently within the current economic um, frameworks that we have, take advantage of those opportunities, talk to people about your ideas, communicate, just keep the circle going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Uh, I appreciate you making time, you know, uh, an hour of your time. There's a lot of time for you to, um, you know, to give to us for this time being. And I really appreciate, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people will, will um, appreciate you taking this time to come and speak to us. And thank you for, you know, sort of like, yeah, letting us know what's going on in the art sector because I think I was I was a bit concerned of like okay all this money and all this we can't do this we can't do that we can't we can't go out but the um, premises aren't going to be available we can't gather and you've just basically set my mind at ease and I'm sure a lot more people watching would feel the same way thank you so much oh Ari, thank you and thank you for reaching out really appreciate it take great care of yourself and when we come oh. out of this we're going to have to have a big street party somewhere oh dude I. <laughs> We're definitely going to have to just just be on the street. I don't think we want to be in buildings. I don't now, think I want to be in buildings anymore. Now, there would be an interesting fe festival on the street at a distance. I wonder what that would look like, level two. <laughs> yeah, at least a metre apart from each other. At least we go, you know, no clinking of the things, but like clinking it together, you know. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you, Aru. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. All right. See you. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. We'll catch you next time.